So you have a mobile app. It's got a million downloads. You mentioned in the top of the conversation, you know, there's there was a big culture shift effectively. It was like, hey, we got to embrace these more modern techniques and modern toolkits. This is how technology is going to be built going forward. This is what our consumers expect. And now you have a mobile app with a 4.8 star rating. And like I said, that is unheard. Like no one would assume the government has a 4.8 star rating app. Give us an idea. What went into it? What is it? Let's start with what does it do? And then talk about the engineering behind it. Sure. Yeah. So the mobile app uh, is basically designed to help people quickly access the most common transactions that they have with the VA. So it's really for our existing users, if they need to come and do something quick, like message a doctor or check on the status of their claim, update their profile, we wanna make it really fast for them to be able to complete that transaction. And similar to the web project, this really started by listening to our users. And first we looked at the data, You know, we saw probably like many organizations, the number of people that were visiting our website from their smartphone was increasing every year. In fact, uh, I think this year we're up to over 50% of all of those uh, page visits are coming from you know a mobile device. And so that is a strong indication that a lot of people are consuming our products from their smartphone. So that just basically led us to ask, are we giving them the best experience that we could or is there a better way to do it? 2018, that wasn't that long ago. So we were fully into the mobile first web approach. You know, we designed for mobile. It's a fully responsive website. But even so, we hypothesized that a mobile app could provide a faster experience. We could take advantage of things like the biometric login to make it easier for somebody to drop right into their account once they've already logged in, for example. You know, the camera to upload a document to the VA. So those sorts of features are a lot harder to implement with a website. And just thinking about our own lives, you know, our team, some of them are veterans, not all of them, but just thinking of our own lives, the way that I interact with like my bank or my airline, it used to be all the website and now it's almost all the app. And we thought that's probably something we should test with veterans. So that was really the problem we were trying to solve is for those those users that are coming to us from a, with a smartphone, how can we make sure that we're giving them a great experience? It led us to want to try basically an experiment to see how easily we could ship a mobile app because that also just wasn't a skill set that our, our team had. So we went through a kind of a whole process that I could talk through about testing the idea just with a prototype at first and then gaining confidence that it was something we could achieve without sort of a, a massive investment that would require even bigger effort. We started down the path of, of building something that we thought would help veterans. Similar to that VA.gov store, we wound up launching it pretty quietly last year. Basically, we just dropped it into the app store and didn't tell anyone really. You know, unlike the web where you could do preview.va.gov, there's no real easy way to, to pilot a new mobile app. It's either it's either in the store or it's not. And so the way we approach that is we dropped it in the store, but without a lot of fanfare. And we started proactively inviting groups and groups of people telling them about it. And then, you know, a lot of people just found it by searching VA in the app store. And right away, we got a lot of great feedback from that, both things that people felt like we needed to to add to it, but also a lot of positive reaction for the features we did have in the app people said, hey, this is this is what I was expecting for the VA and I'm really happy it's all here. And that's really just kind of continued this momentum over the past year, we've become a lot louder about the app now that we've gained kind of confidence, we know it works. And as you said, we just crossed a million downloads. We're getting about 500,000 users per month, uh, unique users using something, using the app for something, messaging their doctor, checking a, a healthcare appointment, checking on that disability claim status, things like that. And it's been really great to see this growth. You know, and one thing I'm, I'm kind of proud of is I feel like our our team, you know, is definitely a web first team. We've got a lot of people that are really into open source, you know, really into web as a platform. But our team was flexible enough to recognize this mobile mobile first way of working. Even though we felt like we were doing good responsive design, that a native app might be the way that our users are expecting us to show up. And so we kind of jumped in and learned a whole new skill set, which we're still still learning. But we feel proud that we've been able to accomplish that. Uh, it's almost like we've been able to like cannibalize ourselves. We're we're taking trans transactions from our web team and now it's this mobile team, but that's okay. I think we always want to be moving to where the veterans are and trying to keep the VA meeting them where they expect us to be. And I think that's going to, you know, be beneficial for your recruiting efforts too, because, you know, the reality is developers want to work on cool projects. You know, that's the fact. Like if I'm a good developer, I'm not really, you know, as much as I want to help, don't get me wrong. I also want to do cool stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'm not trying to work somewhere where I don't get to work on the most modern techniques, the most modern applications to test new technology stacks or frameworks and protocols. So the fact that you're pushing the, the culture this way, do you see that potentially helping you get more talented individuals? Because like you said, there has to be two things. You have to be skilled but you also have to be committed to a level of service because like you said, if I were a, uh, an engineer in the 
private market, I could potentially make more money. So you got to hit, yeah. you got to hit me with something. You got to give me something. Right. And so it sounds like, yeah, exactly. And it's, it's just crazy. like what you said. It's, you know, people are addicted to solving problems. I think that's what good techies want, whether that's a developer, a product manager, a designer, a data scientist, they want to solve a gnarly problem. And that's, that's kind of what people get, get out of bed for. I think that something that the tech industry over the past couple of decades has, has really failed to develop is a tradition of public service. And I think that's actually kind of unique. I think that the tech industry is different than other professions in that it does not yet have a strong tradition of public service. You know, you think of like attorneys, for example, the very most prestigious thing you can do after graduating law school is clerk for the Supreme Court. You know, that's a public service job. There isn't the equivalent of that, you know, Know, the most prestigious thing I can do as a data scientist is go help Social Security Administration detect fraud. That's not a concept that exists. And I think that people, as this industry matures, I think we are going to build a muscle of public service, a tradition of public service. And that's been exciting to see. I think there is a, there are a lot of people out there that are kind of looking at the past decade or so of, of tech, especially consumer tech, and kind of questioning, you know, the problems are interesting, I guess. Like, how can we quickly connect users to the world's knowledge, right? It's an awesome mission statement. But at the end of the day, the way that that business is really working is trying to get more people to spend more time in the app so you can sell ads more efficiently against that time. There's a lot of problems like that that exist in our industry that ultimately at the end of it is kind of like a business model that doesn't really, you know, you question if that's really something worth putting all this energy into. It just feels like there's been a lot of technology effort spent on things that have questionable problems worth solving at the end of them. And if you could imagine that same effort being put towards something like getting a veteran the benefit that they earned fighting in Iraq or Afghanistan, getting them, you know, a Vietnam era veteran, getting them treated for cancer with world-class AI systems just at the bleeding edge of healthcare. Those are problems that are worth solving. This episode of IT Visionaries is brought to you by Salesforce. With Salesforce's low-code app dev tools, you can be more efficient, more productive, and save money by reducing development time by up to 90%. Get Salesforce's low-code playbook and increase time to value for your team and your customers. Visit salesforce.com slash ITV today.